I'm going to show um, my setup with my Astrophysics 1100 equatorial mount and the uh, 175 refractor on a 12 inch uh, pier, tri portable pier tripod that I bought. Um, if you take a look at my videos that I have on YouTube, the one is called Astrophysics 1100 mount on the AP Eagle tripod or the Astrophysics 175 on a Mach 1 EQ mount. Uh, you will see it uh, with the uh, Eagle tripod, which is a 6 inch diameter. This is 12 inch diameter. And uh, I got this earlier in the year and I wanted to upgrade to something a little bit more stout. Okay, so this is an ATF 12 inch. And uh, you'll see here, this is the south side of the. Uh, the tripod and you'll note that this is the center and the uh, flat, plate, flat plate surface adapter has been offset there's a reason for that um, and then uh, I made up this uh, hook arrangement all it is is an eye hook a stainless steel eye hook 3 8 and I uh, took a uh, pneumatic cutoff wheel and just cut that off a pneumatic tool with a cutoff wheel and just cut that off and uh, made a hook for my keypad and I uh, didn't want to drill any holes into this, so I was able to use the existing holes that are 3816 and adapted uh, that. Over here, on the other side, you'll note that I have two eye hooks. In fact, this is the same kind that I used uh, for the other thing where I cut it off. Now, there's a reason for that. That aids me in, in uh, putting on the uh, telescope, and I'll show that later. So here we have the 1100 mount on the 12-inch uh, tripod and uh, as you can see the reason that uh, I offset it was because the CP4 had to clear the tripod well I do have a one-inch extension that you can see and I didn't want to put any more extensions on so by offsetting it uh, the 1100 flat surface adapter by offsetting that onto the uh, from the top plate of the uh, tripod I was able to um, just keep the one little extension on the mount and uh, still use the CP4 now the other good thing is is with the counterweights and I tried it even if I take the uh, mount and set it to 20 degrees north latitude those counterweights still miss the front top plate of that tripod. So conceivably you're going anywhere in the United States. As far south as you're going to get in the United States and then some. And um, if one had to, you could just take that mount and rotate it 360 degrees and uh, have the counterweights uh, on the opposite side that you see them now but that's never going to be an issue for me, so. Now there's plenty of clearance between the tripod and the CP4 so that I can adjust it in azimuth uh, when I want to get it lined up to the uh, pole. Now when I set up the uh, telescope in the other videos, you notice I use this Bogan light stand with this clamp on top and that's what I would use to rest the counterweight shaft in so that the um, it was horizontal so that I could put the telescope into the saddle and it was horizontal and easier to uh, to attach the scope to the saddle and you can see that video if you care to to see what I'm talking about but I wanted to streamline things because I wanted to eliminate as much extra items that you have to carry and set up at night and then take it down so I came up with a better idea. Now that idea lies in using those two 3 8 eye bolts that I was talking about earlier. So what I did is I found some stainless steel chain and uh, used some stainless steel S hooks and actually adapted or uh, made uh, the proper length that I needed so that the chain hooks to those uh, eye bolts and then up into some eye bolts that I put at the top of the saddle plate 
And then I just move my counterweights all the way down to the far end of the uh, shaft, of the counterweight shaft. That bears weight on it, keep the axis loose. And then I go and mount the telescope uh, on. And then once the telescope has been put into the saddle, then I can take the uh, chains off and uh, it's done. Oh, you got to carry those two little light chains in a little uh, Rubbermaid container that I keep them in. Now here you see those two little stainless steel chains with uh, S-hooks that I used. So isn't that a lot nicer in a little Rubbermaid container versus that big light stand? So I've gone from the light stand, which is cumbersome, to this. So uh, real, I'm real happy that it did work out for me. So here you see the uh, eye hook that I put into the saddle plate. And basically just use the holes that were existing in the uh, plate on the back side. Here's this tapped through hole. And I used an existing uh, tapped through hole. Didn't have to drill or do anything to this uh, saddle plate. Same goes to the other side. There was a through hole. And I uh, employed that, used that. And uh, didn't have to drill any holes. When I did this, I didn't want to drill any holes into anything. Again, using what was already available. And uh, I like it, it works good. And as you can see then, you just put the counterweight shaft. Well, it, it makes the counterweight shaft uh, horizontal. And now all I have to do is, now that this is horizontal, for me it's easier to put the scope on in this manner and then I just uh, can come from below and tighten up the three uh, uh, knobs here to attach the, uh, to clamp it down. As you can see there, those clamps, there's three of them on here. Then that would clamp into the uh, dovetail plate that, it, that, that would uh, fit into here. So there you have it, uh, the 175 is uh, mounted and uh, by eliminating the Bogan light stand it just uh, made less for me to carry uh, and the, the uh, chains worked really nice. They do the job. There it is. The next step is just to uh, slide the counterweights to balance it and you're good to go. Now the other item that I had to consider was as I was swinging the telescope in right ascension, I wanted to make sure that that eye bolt that I put up at the saddle wasn't going to hit the motor box. And as luck would have it, everything was fine. So this, this really worked out really nice. I mean, it, it uh, no issues, very simple fix. Uh, in eliminating the light stand and uh, just works really really nice I'm glad that uh, I eliminated that and came up with this
Another thing that I wanted to streamline was I always like to put a light uh, on the tripod at the bottom to illuminate the leg area so if other people are using it or even myself at night, it illuminates that area so you don't uh, trip or, or hit the uh, legs. So I by accident found out about these uh, units called Prince, by, made by Princeton Tech and uh, really nice, really cool. I bought, got them on Amazon. And I bought one of each. They make several other uh, designs, but the one I bought was a Helix Base Camp. And then I bought the smaller version, the Helix Backcountry. And um, I won't go too much into them. They're really nice. They do red or they do white light. They're variable. Uh, if you just Google that, you'll find uh, videos on those. And... Uh, but uh, and then I can use one for reading uh, maps and the other one I'm going to hang up underneath. So as you can see, here's the Helix Backcountry and it actually does collapse. Now it's in the open position, but it collapses and locks or it, it, it uh, and in the expanded uh, condition it's like that. And it's got this little hook on it. And I thought, well that's the secret to what I want to do. Okay, I wanted it very simple. I wanted just something that was self-contained. No wires that I had to worry about uh, ran on its own power source. But then I needed to somehow anchor this to the tripod. And I, again, didn't want to drill holes or do anything that would be too gaudy. So here's what I came up with. On the very bottom of this uh, tripod, they already have a half-inch tapped hole. Okay, so I use that, and just basically what I did is I used a uh, eye bolt, quarter inch eye bolt, by four inches long, and then I put uh, some stainless steel spacers in there to, to give me a gap in between to put my light. And now all I got to do is just take this light unit, and here we are, and it hangs underneath there and illuminates the area. So it was a very simple fix to uh, do what I wanted and now it's self-contained, no wires going to it. At the end of the night all I have to do is pull this thing off and take the rest of the, of, of the setup down and it, uh, I don't know, it's, just, it's really nice. It, uh, and they're nice lights. Again, um, check those out on Google those Princeton Tech. So when, when I want to take the tripod to a remote location I've got a Honda CRV and that's not ideal for this. This thing is way big to fit in there. So I've got a 5 by 10 foot trailer that uh, I uh, strap it down to. So to do that I came up with this um, adapter I call it. This piece of wood 2 by 4 material and then I cut a um, round disc that fit inside the uh, AP1100 uh, flat surface adapter. Then I put some stainless steel footmen on it. Rounded the corners, made them nice and smooth. This way I can take a ratchet strap, go through the footmen, and actually anchor it down then to the D-rings down at the bottom. And that allows this to stay, um, you know, it can't go anywhere. And if you notice, being the fact that the uh, ba uh, 1100 adapter, flat surface adapter, is offset, I made sure that when I mounted the 2x4, it was in the center line of the tripod. So the force is being put down through the center. It works really good. Haven't had any issues, and um, I was contemplating folding it up, but really, as massive as it is, it has no issues just traveling like this. And uh, that way, when you get to your location, you can just pick the thing up and heft it over to where you're at. Works out really good.